All right. Welcome back, everyone, to Plant-Based Kidney Health. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. My partner is Michelle Krosmer. This is our sort of six-part series, five-part. It may even be longer, depending on how many questions there are on PKD. So if you haven't watched the first episodes, do so. Today's question is building on all of these topics, and that is about diet. So, Michelle, can you tell us what is a good or ideal diet for patients who have PKD? Yeah. So um, some of the dietary interventions or diet interventions that we um, want people with PKD to think about are similar to people with kidney disease that don't have PKD. Um, So we're looking at, um, I mean, again, plant focus. We want to make sure that it's a, that potential renal acid load, which we have other episodes on, but that it's a more alkaline producing diet, getting more vegetables in the diet, more fiber, whole plant foods. Um, all of that's very important. And then some other specifics, um, which Dr. Hashmi had addressed was the importance of low sodium, um, less than 2000 milligrams a day. We want to make sure that people are, you know, well hydrated, preventing dehydration. And we'll go more into that, but that's, you know, a, generally at least three liters a day or around a hundred ounces a day. Um, so, and th- those are kind of usually the things that you will see on some of the PKD foundation um, websites, as far as, you know, what to eat when you Google, you know, what to eat with PKD. And then um, Dr. Hashmi had also brought up um, that there is, you know, new and emerging research on if, you know, inducing ketosis and how that can help to um, either slow or prevent the cyst formation or growth or potentially even, um, you know, shrink it or help there be less fibrosis and things like that. And so as Dr. Hashmi had mentioned, in order to um, get into that state of ketosis, then there's those three options. So there's the ketogenic diet, there's the beta hydroxybutyrate or the BHB supplement. And then there's also um, like an intermittent fasting or time restricted feeding that that can be done. Um, one of the very important things with this is that we still want to have a plant focused ketogenic diet. And I can't, um, like highlight that enough. A lot of times the ketogenic diet, it's, it's heavy in animal products and animal fats, and sometimes can be very high in protein and protein restriction is still something that as kidney disease progresses with polycystic kidney disease, the protein restriction still comes into play and the plant proteins over the animal proteins are still beneficial. And so for a more plant focused ketogenic diet, we are looking at more of those plant fats, healthier fats, some of those nuts and seeds and avocado. And again, things like potassium are going to be restricted based on individual labs. So that might be relevant to someone. It might not be relevant to someone. Um, but you're, you know, working on getting in more, more vegetables, um, plant fats, and then utilizing some, um, oils like extra virgin olive oil, avocado oil. That way you're getting more of the the higher fat, lower, carbohydrate diet. Um, if oftentimes, um, what I see, and especially with renal dietitians that are working with people with polycystic kidney disease, um, a plant focus might include some animal products. And usually that would be coming from something like eggs or maybe yogurt over, of course, your red meats or processed meats, um, or other types of, of meat. So that's kind of what we would be looking at. And then the other, um, thing to keep in mind is that people with, um, about, 25% of people with polycystic kidney disease also have kidney stones and kidney stones are associated with more severe polycystic kidney disease. And so depending on the person, that's something that would be individualized based on, you know, kidney stones, um, as well as the type of kidney stone, but bringing that into someone's individualized diet plan would be looking at, um, potentially lowering the uric acid. And so that's, you know, limiting meat intake, also looking at, um, you know, avoiding the inorganic phosphates and that's across the board with kidney disease. That's important, but those are those phosphorus additives. And then if, um, someone is having those, uh, calcium oxalate stones and they have high urine oxalate, um, levels, then that would also, we be bringing in a low oxalate diet. So, it can get, it's kind of just adding, I think with PKD, oftentimes it's like we have kidney disease and we're adding these other layers of potentially ketosis and potentially lower oxalate and do they have stones and the hydration and low sodium. And so I really, really suggest that people work with a specialized renal dietitian to help them um, see how that works 
into a typical day based on their needs and where they fall. But those are some of those extra considerations for someone with polycystic kidney disease and their diet that oftentimes don't come into play with kidney disease. So please drop your guys' questions um, in the comments and we will be having more episodes on PKD in the future.